Hi, I'm Chris Hodge, Developer Advocate for Apache TVM at OctoML. And in this tutorial, I'll be giving an introduction to TVM. I'll be attempting to address four questions. First, why should you use TVM? Second, how does TVM work? Third, how do you install TVM? And finally, how do you get started with using TVM? Let's begin with why you should use TVM. We can frame this discussion around a simple image classification example. Let's say that you've been asked to deploy an object detector that can classify images accurately. To do so, you're going to need to go through two phases. First, you'll need to train the classifier, called the training phase. And second, you're going to need to deploy the classifier for the inference phase. To train the model, you're going to need a labeled data set, a model that you can manually define or that you can import from libraries, and then you need to begin by running your training. Training uses back propagation to update weights or parameters to minimize an objective function that targets classification accuracy over a certain number of training epochs. Training is typically run on expensive hardware or a lot of GPUs, and over time, your parameters are updated so that your classifier accuracy improves. This is all done within a training framework, and today there are a handful of them that are available for you to use. Now, phase two comes to the deployment of the model, and that's what this talk is more focused on. Now that you have a pre-trained model, you're going to need to determine the requirements for your deployment. Namely, what device are you planning to deploy to? Are you going to deploy to a CPU or a GPU? Are you going to deploy to the edge or the cloud? To a DSP or an accelerator? Mobile versus Internet of Things. Once you've made this decision, you may need to make trade-offs between the accuracy of the model and how fast the model runs. Finally, you're going to need to deploy your model into an application. This could be written in Python, C++, C, or Rust. And the operating system also needs to, and the application also needs to be, to be deployed on top of an operating system on top of the desired hardware. What this leads to very quickly is a deployment challenge that nearly every machine learning engineer is going to face. You have a source that your trained model is coming from, be this a system like PyTorch or CAFE2 or MXNet or Onyx. And then you're going to have to make a decision to where you want to deploy this trained machine learning model. Here you're going to find all sorts of processor architectures and ISAs, GPUs, mobile phones, ed devices, and microcontrollers. Figuring out the best option for choosing a framework to deploy to a particular hardware system can be a little bit daunting. For instance, if you're asked to deploy a TF Lite model onto an ARM CPU, you're in luck. You can use the very handy TF Lite interpreter and deploy your model seamlessly onto your ARM CPU. But what if you deployed your model on CAFE2? Well, now you're not in luck anymore, as CAFE2 doesn't have support for microarchitectures. So what are your options? You can maybe try to find a library that will allow you to deploy the model to the architecture, or you could rewrite the model into TensorFlow Lite, which means you'd have to train again, or you could find some sort of converter that converts the model to a framework that you can then deploy to your hardware. And you can imagine how many different deployment scenarios engineers encounter every day and how much of a maze they need to add, navigate every time they want to deploy a new model to new hardware. Thankfully, there's a solution to this deployment problem, and it's called TVM. TVM is the open source optimization framework for machine learning. 
It can ingest models from a number of different sources, including PyTorch, TensorFlow, Onyx, and MXNet. And it can target a number of different architectures, including x86, ARM, NVIDIA GPUs, AMD GPUs, MIPS, and RISC-V. It's also supported by a number of different operating systems, including Linux, Mac, iOS, Android, Zephyr OS, Windows, and WebGPU. TVM has a growing community of more than 430 contributors. It's recently transitioned out of incubating to graduated at the Apache Software Foundation, which means that it's entirely community owned. There's no one single company that controls TVM and instead it enjoys contributions from a number of contributors across the, across the industry. There are very active discussion forums where there are topics that range from planning for future features to reporting, to reporting bugs, to getting support for how to use TVM. Plus we also have regular meetups with monthly meetings and an annual conference like the one you're at right now. So what problems does TVM address? Well, one of the problems that TVM is looking to solve is the portability problem. When there are limited hardware options for you to deploy your model to, you need to be able to rely on a framework that allows you that that will be able to take a model and target that particular hardware. It's also looking to address the problem of efficiency. When you need to get as much efficiency out of your target platform as you can, TVM has optimization options that let you optimize a model to target particular hardware. And software support. When you need to build a new software stack for your hardware system, TVM gives you the tools to accomplish that. Okay, so let's talk about our first use case. Murdata Sar, a University of Washington researcher, needed to take a trained keyword spotting model and deploy it to a fairly unconventional piece of hardware, the Azure Sphere. Now, Azure Sphere is Microsoft's secure edge Internet of Things device. It has limited SRAM, bare bones operating system, and at the time, no C++ support, no dynamic linking. And TVM was able to take this model and compile it to this new architecture. So this brings us to the first use case. A machine learning engineer says, I'm generally very happy with TensorFlow or PyTorch, and I was asked to deploy a model on a platform that is not supported or is poorly supported by these frameworks. The challenge is that for non-x86 ISAs or unsupported GPUs, DSPs, and accelerators or non-mainstream operating systems, there may not be support within the popular frameworks to compile models down to them. TVM provides the ability to deploy machine learning on platforms where deployment would be painstakingly difficult otherwise. Okay, let's consider a second use case. Running AI in the data center incurs a large cost for companies like Facebook. So they have a workload, Wave RNN style model architecture, that's compute dominated by GRU and FC layers. A 24 kilohertz sampling frequency requires a 40, a 40 microsecond inference net runtime. But initial model runs in PyTorch took 3,400 microsecond inference net runtimes. This was 85 times slower than the desired target speed. However, when TVM optimizations were applied to this model, the Facebook engineers were able to obtain 113 times speed up in one week. So for use case two, the ML systems engineer. 
I'm targeting a pretty mainstream system, for example, x86 or GPU, but I want to get the most performance out of my model. Every millisecond I shave off results in savings for the service that you've deployed in the cloud. The challenge is most frameworks rely on libraries that are optimized for the common workload. And frameworks can have inefficient interpreters. TVM addresses this, pro this problem by providing model optimization capabilities to produce a library that is fine-tuned for your one model to run fast on your one platform. Okay, finally, the third use case, TVM for software support. There has been an explosion of companies that are building AI hardware. And a very significant challenge they are faced with is building a software stack that would allow machine learning practitioners to use their hardware for inference or training. So in use case number three, there's a hardware manufacturer. I've taped out very good hardware. Now I'd like to build a software stack so my hardware can be easily targeted by machine learning practitioners. The challenge is building a complete compiler stack for deep learning is very challenging. What do you build support for? TensorFlow, PyTorch, Onyx Runtime, all of the above? TVM provides layered abstractions to integrate external hardware code generation or even hardware optimized software libraries. And TVM has already had an impact on the industry. For example, every Alexa wake up today across all devices uses a model optimized with TVM. At Facebook, TVM enabled real time on mobile CPUs for free. More than an 85 times speed up for their speech recognition model. Bing query understanding went from 112 milliseconds to 34 milliseconds using a TVM optimized model. And at Qualcomm, TVM is a key to ML access on Hexagon. Okay, so now that we've covered why you should use TVM, let's move on to how TVM works. Okay, so let's come back to our simple image classification example. We have an image, we send it into the classifier, and we get an inference about what that image is. But what's happening inside of this black box? Well, when we dissect the black box, we can see that the model has a number of different layers that perform different oper operations. Many of these layers are a 2D convolution computation on the input data with a number of parameters to produce output data. So each of these layers is also an operator, takes an input tensor, has a parameter tensor, performs a 2D convolution, and produces an output tensor. So let's look at an example of an operator implementation. In this case, we're going to be looking at matrix multiply. Now, in the naive approach, which many of you have probably written, it simply iterates over all of the indices of the matrices and performs the multiplication and the addition of the vector to produce the output. Now, in an optimized approach, which can be thousands and thousands of lines of code, you can wind up with 10 to 100 times faster performance. As a real life example of this high performance operator, we can look at the UN8 depthwise convolution operator in TF Lite. It's about 13,000 lines of carefully and expertly crafted code. But why are there so many lines of code? Well, there's a lot of assembly in line need to get the best performance. There are different implementations for different quantization types across strides, rounding modes. And there are special implementations for vector intrinsics like neon on ARM. So this brings us to an operator optimization challenge. How can we achieve the same level of hand-tuned performance while keeping code compact and readable? There are lots of different operators. 
And each operator takes in different input tensor shapes and can use different dilation, strides, and padding sizes. And what about if the hardware target changes? Different architectures of CPUs with different cache hierarchies and number of threads and different vector instructions. So there are a number of different options out there for tackling this problem. For example, the Halite programming model has a functional definition. This says, what should this function do? And then it allows for schedule definitions that say, how should the function do it? And there are some benefits to this. It's easy to read and it's easy to explore. But there are some downsides. It requires good lowering machinery and it still needs manual schedule exploration. Okay, so let's come back to TVM and look at a TVM schedule for matrix multiplication. There's a tensor expression domain specific language that defines the algorithm and the schedule. Okay, so we have placeholders for the A and B matrices. We can define a reduction axis. And then we, have this, we define the C matrix as an operation of multiplication between the A and the B matrices along the K reduction axis. And then from this information, TVM can create a default schedule. And if we take a look at the tensor level intermediate representation program that defines this low level implementation, which can then be compiled down to LLVM IR or CUDA or OpenCL, we see that it looks very similar to our three nested loop naive implementation that we defined before. But we can go further. So TVM allows you to manipulate the schedule. And in this case, we're going to do some tiling and reordering. And so we start with our vanilla schedule and we define a block size of 32. So we can compute a, we can compute a tiling and we can also do a reordering. And the result that comes out of this is now six nested loops that have been optimized for the block size that we defined above. But we can go even further than that. We can also do vectorization that takes, away, that takes advantage of hardware specific operations. So once again, we start with the vanilla schedule. We compute a tiling. We do a split reduction access. And then we apply the vectorization. The result of this operation is five nested loops. And on the inner loop of that operation is a vectorization that takes care, that takes advantage of hardware specific features for vectorization. Okay, so what did we get after this? Before we had a basic schedule that looked like our naive schedule. And then after about 13 lines of code, we produced a new schedule that's about 200 times faster. So let's revisit this again. With 13 lines of scheduling code, we can increase performance by about 200 times. Tiling and loop permutations lead to better cache hit rates. Array packing can turn non-continuous access patterns into continuous access patterns. Vectorizations take advantage of special hardware instructions and thread level parallelization makes use of all of the cores. And TVM provides a number of different scheduling primitives that you can use to, to, to optimize your computations. These includes things like split, so to break a for loop into two nested loops, reorder, change the order of nested loops, tiling, compile, split, and reorder to break computation into chunks, Fuse can combine two nested loops into a larger loop. Compute at moves a computation into the loop of another computation. 
compute in line moves a, stage, a stage's computation into its consumer definition, and compute root moves a, stage, a stage's computation into the root or the first loop. Vectorize, compute multiple instructions along the innermost dimension using a, vectoriza a vectorization intrinsic. Tensorize computes multiple instructions along the two plus innermost dimension using a tensorization intrinsic. And parallel computes a loop using threading. Bind will map a loop to hardware to a hardware thread access. And this is often used in GPU program. And you can also do cache reads and cache writes. Okay, so now we come to the next level of how TVM can produce optimized schedules. And this is learning-based auto-scheduling. In the prior example, even though we had 200 times speed improvement over the naive implementation, it still attained about 60% of the performance that you get from the MLK, which is a hand-tuned library performance with just a few lines of code but can we take the performance a notch further? Well, scheduling is a bit of an art. There are factors used for splits, vectorization, and loop orders that are a function of the target hardware, of the target hardware architecture and input tensor shapes. This results in a very large cert space of schedules, often billions of possible schedules per operator. So we can look at this problem in a formal way. We have an expression and we have a search space. We want to feed both of these into auto TVM and then produce an optimization configuration that's fed into a code generator that produces a program that can be run on hardware. This hardware, when we run it on this hardware, we can treat that as a function where the output is the execution time. So our objective is to minimize the function, the cost function, in using the parameters in the search space. Now we can take the data that comes out of the hardware and then we can feed this back into a statistical cost model so that auto TVM can make new predictions about what is the best code that can be generated on the hardware. And the benefit of this is that we can automatically adapt to any hardware type, hardware that exists today or hardware that exists in the future. For example, using this approach, on a 2D convolution layer of ResNet 18 on Titan X. An auto TVM ML based model has 1.5, an auto TVM machine learning based model has a 1.5 relative speed up over the baseline KU DNN model. Okay. So this brings us to the next level of optimization, TVM higher level graph level optimizations. So at the high level, there's a data flow graph and TVM uses relay, a functional and statically typed intermediate representation to describe machine learning computation. Relay implements common features in ML frameworks like quantization and shape inference as standard optimization passes. So let's look at operator fusion and how that can give us performance improvements. So at graph level, so in graph level optimization with operator fusion, we have a number of different operators that are run within your machine learning model. At every one of these points, when you have the input tensor that mows into the operator and the parameters that define how that operation work, and then the output of that is passed onto the new layer, we have DRAM access. This is happening at every stage within the, within the 
within the model. Every, this is happening at every layer within the model. But are these many DRAM accesses really that necessary? The idea is if we take all of these operations and we fuse them together, we instead perform a limited number of DRAM access instead of the repeated DRAM access. So we fuse multiple operators into a single operator to memorize memory access. Now, if you have to rely on an operator library, you need to add implementation for fused operators. And that's a long list of operators. Thankfully, with more flexible code generation approaches like TVM, we can generate fused kernels on demand. Using graph level optimization passes to fuse operations allows us to compose optimization passes to improve performance of deep learning workloads. As much as a 2.29 factor improvement over no operator fusion on the, on the MobileNet V2 machine learning model. Okay, so look at, let's look at the results that we can get with TVM. The TVM definition and schedule, schedule implementation for depth-wise 2D convolution is less than 700 lines long, which is far less than the 13,000 lines that we looked at before. And this covers all kernel sizes, not just three by three, and also different data type implementations, not just U and eight. And with this method we get, when we compare TF light versus TVM versus TVM auto tuner versus TVM plus auto scheduler on Raspberry Pi, we can see dramatic performance improvements across a number of different models. Okay, so now we'll briefly talk about microcontroller support with TVM and how you can target different hardware. Microcontrollers have a number of different challenges. There's no operating system or a very limited operating system. We can have very stringent memory constraints, such as limited SRAM, and floating point operations are generally very expensive. Integer computation is preferred, if not mandatory, and there are limited machine learning runtimes and interpreters available for microcontrollers, as well as limited machine learning operator libraries. Now, how TVM addresses, addresses this is outside of the scope of this introduction, but it will be covered later today during the micro TVM tutorial talk. So please stay tuned for that. It's happening this afternoon. Okay. So we talked about how TVM can use operator level optimizations, perform automated optimization search on those, on using that framework, and can also perform graph level optimizations. But there are a lot of topics that we haven't covered here. The TVM run, the TVM runtime and the relay virtual machine, RPC communication mechanisms for programming edge devices, GPU and Tensor Core support, support for hardware accelerators and FPGAs, sparse operator support, in4 quantization, which gives you low, ultra low bit width quantization, and training and auto differentiation. Okay, so now let's move on to the next topic. How do you install TVM? If you're just getting started, we recommend installing on Linux. TVM is supported on Mac OS and Windows and support is improving, but at the moment, Linux will give the best experience. Then there are two main ways that you can install TVM. The first is to install it from Tackage. There's a new project called TLC Pack, which is independent of the Apache TVM community that's great for getting started quickly. 
you can also install TVM from source. And this is great if you want to contribute to TVM or you need to enable special features. There are a number of prerequisites that you need to be able to install TVM. A recent C++ compiler supporting C++14. This is offered by G++5 or higher. CMake 3.5 or greater for source installation and LLVM 4.0 or greater. If desired, CUDA Toolkit 8.0 or greater, as well as optional pocket pa package managers for dependencies, such as PIP for Python, Conda for Python and others, and Homebrew for Mac OS. To install from TLC Pack, you just use PIP. You can use pip install TLC Pack and then you point it to the tlcpack.ai page in the wheels.html index. Now there are several flavors of, flavors of TLC Pack available depending upon your needs. There's TLC Pack for CPU only, and TLC Pack for CUDA versions 10.0, 10.1, and 10.2. Now, if you decide to go to install from source, you can do that by cloning the TVM repository and then doing a, a git submodule in it and a git submodule update. From there, you can install the dependencies that TVM needs. And so this is Python 3, the Python 3 de development, uh, GCC, CMake, and a number of other libraries that are required to compile TVM. You change into the TVM directory, make a new build directory, and then copy the CMake basic configuration file into that build directory. Then you're going to want to edit your config.cmake for your environment and your needs. And so if you're using CUDA, you'll want to enable CUDA. For debugging, you'll want to enable the embedded graph runtime and debugging functions with set graph runtime on and use graph runtime debug on. You'll also want to enable LLVM, and you can choose to manually set the LLVM path or allow CMake to discover where, uh, where the LLVM configuration is. Once you've done that, you change into your build directory, you call CMake on the directory directly above it, and that's going to generate a number of make files, which they, you can then call make on. And in this case, we're calling make with with four threads of parallelism. And finally, when you're installing from source, you'll also want to enable the Python bindings. So for developers, you can export your TVM home and then add the TVM home to your Python path with the Python subdirectory. This is probably the easiest way to use for developers to hack on Python as changes that you make within your Python will immediately be reflected within your Python path. If you want to install it to your Python environment, you can change into the Python directory and then do python setup.py install with the optional user flag if you only want to install it into the user space. You can omit the user flag if you want to install it globally. And then you'll want to install the additional Python dependencies. These include numpy, decorator, adders, tornado, psutil, and xgboost. Okay, with TVM installed, now you'll want to use TVM. Now you'll want to use TVM. We're going to cover a basic example of compiling an Onyx model within the TVM framework. So we're going to use Python and we're going to import Onyx, NumPy, TVM, TVM tensor expressions, Relay, and some helper libraries that will allow us to download the Onyx model. The model that we're going to be using is the super resolution Onyx model that takes a small image 244 by 244 and upsizes it. So 
we define the model URL, and then we have a model path that we're going to save the model to. We download the test data, and then we load the Onyx model. We're also going to download a test image. So from the Python image library, we import image and then download the, an image of a cat. We convert it to YB, YCBCR, and then we convert it to a NumPy array. So now we're going to define a target for TVM. In this case, we're going to use LLVM, and we're going to specify the Broadwell CPU. Now LLVM, as a target, has a number of different hardware options that you can set that will allow TVM and LLVM to compile the model more optimally. We set an input name and a shape dict, and then we compile the Onyx model to Relay. With TVM, we can then build an interpreter using the graph runtime. We specify the data type as float32. And then we can evaluate the model against the input to produce the output using the TVM runtime. And then we can look at the results. On the left, we have the original 244 by 244 image and the upsized image. Okay, so where do you go to learn more about TVM? Well, the TVM website is an excellent starting point. It's at tvm.apache.org and it has documentation tutorials, and very active discussion forums. We also host monthly community meetings. These are on the third Thursday of every month and, in and include project updates and demos. Plus, there are a number of tutorials today. And so if you want to learn how you can use TVM to automatically optimize your models and then compile those models, you should join us at 1015 for TVMC, a command line driver for TVM by Leandro Nunez at ARM. At 1130, there is the Bring Your Own Code Gen to TVM that will be delivered by Zichen as at Amazon Web Services. And finally, at one o'clock, there's going to be Micro TVM running the TVM stack on bare metal by Andrew Roish at OctoML. It is going to go a little bit deeper into the TVM architecture and then give some examples on how you can take models and compile them and deploy them to microarchitecture. There are a number of resources, including academic papers about TVM, tutorials, as well as an Azure Spot demo blog post. So if you have any more questions, or if you're interested in learning more, please reach out to me. I'm Chris Hodge, the developer advocate for Apache TVM at OctoML. And my email address is chodge at octoml at dot AI. Thank you. TVM is a community effort and much of this work credit goes to Tianchi Chen and Jared Roche and the many amazing TVM contributors and collaborators at the University of Washington, OctoML, AWS, ARM, ARM, <laughs> and Berkeley. So thank you and enjoy the rest of the tutorial day and the rest of the conference. Okay, so thanks everybody. I hope that that you uh, enjoyed that uh, that 
brief tutorial, um, that brief introduction to TVM. Um, so uh, now we're here, we have a little bit of time left over uh, before we go into the break. And I'm happy to uh, field any questions that we might have. Um, so please, if you have a question, you can enter it into the Q&A box. Um, when it's there, we'll be able to um, type an answer into it and um, you know that, that everyone will be able to see. Um, so, uh, so we have a question. Um, have you tried any experiments with HD 1200 by 1920 or ultra HD image sizes on standard models like ResNets? Um, so uh, checking with some of the developers on, on TVM, um, it doesn't look like we have an, an HD ResNet result. Um, but it certainly doesn't hurt to try, um, and and we can usually get TVM to to have some 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 uh, some some good results on emerging workloads. Are there any other questions that that, that folks might folks might have? Okay, so we have another question uh, from Daniel. Uh, great intro, thanks. Does TVM output a compiled library or can it output code? If so, what are the possible languages? Is C++ 11 supported? So as, so as a compiler framework, TVM works with a lot of intermediate representations and then it, it, it's it's able to use different backends to lower that code into into different platforms. And so, for example, if you're using LLVM, it's going to generate um, it, it's going to generate code that goes into the LLVM IR and then gets lowered down. I I I believe that it's also possible to um, it's 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 possible to emit to particular code. And that's one of the one of the benefits that TBM has is 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 that because it's because of its its layered approach to solving this problem, you can target different different platforms, including like different code bases. Um, but I've I've also asked the team about about this, and and they'll probably be able to give me a uh, a, a better answer. So hang tight for that. Um, yeah, so it's so it's out so it output it's output as a compiled library that packages up everything by default, um, and then you can load and run the compile library in the TVM runtime. So that's the um, and 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 this can be done in the language of your choice, whether this is uh, Java, Python, Go, JavaScript, Rust, or C plus plus, and and TVM has a, has a number of different bindings for for all of these languages. Okay, so the next question from an anonymous attendee is, how is the Onyx runtime uh, being different from TVM? So, um, so TVM is it's 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 just a distinct runtime from the Onyx runtime. Uh, it, TVM has its um, has 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 a uh, um, is um, is designed so that it can be standalone, so that it comes with it come with uh, you know, kind of kind of batteries installed, so that if you need to be able to run a TVM model on very basic hardware, all you need is the C standard library to be able to run that. Um, so, uh, but 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 TVM has its own has its own intermediate languages, its own uh, graph runtimes. Um, but it really um, Onyx is really uh, one of the one of the best platforms to be able to import external models into into TVM. Like if you think of TVM as you want to be able to ingest a model from any system and then be able to compile that and do optimizations against it. The uh, models based on Onyx have the most support for for the importer. So if you are so if you're looking to bring a model from a from a different system, um, and you find like you, like you know maybe you're bringing in a Keras model. Um, you and you might be running into problems. You might have um, better luck by taking that model to Onyx first and then bringing that on Onyx model into uh, a, a TVM. Okay, 
Um, so another question. Um, uh, TVM sounds amazing. Uh, thank you. <laughs> I think it's I think it's 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 a pretty neat project. And I've been I've been working with TVM since about uh, since about June of this year, um, and I'm super impressed with it. Um, what are the remaining challenges? What stops us from using it all the time for inference from now on? Um, so, <laughs> um, uh, I mean, I, I don't know what's stopping it from being used for, uh, <laughs> for, 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 for all inference. Um, you, you know, there are, because, because TVM isn't, it, it's, it's not being really t used in that first phase where you're training the model and you're, and you're doing the back propagation. Um, a lot of people might just might find it more convenient to be able to stay within the frameworks that they're in and run their inference from those, from, from those engines. Um, and so one of the things that I think that we're trying to, to accomplish with TBM going forward into the future is, um, is, is making it so it's available to plug into other platforms and be able to to to, to ingest the models from other platforms. Um, it, it, there's there's also um, because TVM is a very large and complex platform, it can it takes a bit of time to learn how to use it uh, effectively. Um, and so we're also working on making it easier for 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 new users who are showing up and want to want to build models and do inference with those. To be able to get started by optimizing models, by compiling models, by compiling by optimizing models, um, you know, and this is through improving the the, the interfaces, uh, the APIs, and also just the documentation. Okay, so we have, um, so we have a question from from another from another attendee who was asking are there any swags or giveaways um we did have a, a giveaway of 400 t-shirts um for people as they registered to the conference and that was the, there was a limited quantity of that um we after the conference is over we are hoping that we'll be able to to order some more t-shirts and get those out to some attendees who who weren't able to get them so stay tuned we're going to be checking in on this and um we'll let everybody know if there are more shirts available Um, so we have a question from another attendee. Um, thanks for the great job. I'm wondering if the TVM community has the plan to work on training. Um, so, so the community itself hasn't, um, hasn't, hasn't set up any specific training, uh, plans for, um, for, for, for like, like consumer-based training for, for, for being able to use TVM. Um, you know, we have events like this where we have, where we have, where we have some tutorials. Um, we're trying, we're, we're, we're always trying to improve and work on the documentation so that people can be more successful with TVM more quickly. Um, the company that I work for, OctoML, um, is also able to, based, based on need and based on, based on who we talk to, um, you know, be able to, um, give some tutorials about how TVM works. Um, and so if that's something that you're interested in, um, you can, you can reach out to me and we can see what is uh, what, what's what's happening within the company um but that's you know but that like our, our plans for that that's that's at a, at a at a higher level and i don't know if that's something that we're going to be making widely available um but i but but i don't know it, it, it is possible um i think that question might have been about um like plans for implementing like training models in TVM. Oh, for training models in TVM. Um, <laughs> thanks, Lily. Uh, yeah, Lily, maybe you can answer that question as to as to what's on the roadmap for the from the, for the MLSS team for model training. I, I mean, I, I I think I've seen that it's on the uh, on the on the radar. Yeah. So I'm I am not working on training right now, um, but I do know it is on the roadmap and currently in development. Um, and maybe someone else can speak more about that. Yeah. Okay. So there's another question. Um, aside from graph level optimizations, do you perform other types of optimizations such as quantization and or pruning? And the answer to that is yes. Um, and actually Lily, who, who you heard from earlier, um, has been working on some, I, I think Lily's been, you've been working on this, Lily, some, some, some pretty pretty cool work um, for, for like, like, like ultra, like um, ultra low, low, 
low bit quantization. So actually using like UINT4 for, for quantization. But yeah, as, as part of the graph optimization phase, there is, um, there, there is an option for, for, for both pruning and for, and for quantization. Yeah, so I've been working on um, just making an extensible uh, quantization framework, which hopefully should be um, should have a PR or RFC sometime uh, soon. I think the goal is to uh, have it finalized by the end of December. Okay, um, so another question. I saw TVM can tar target Vulcan. Are there any examples for the same? Um, and is there are there any plans to extend to other graphics APIs like Direct ML or Direct X from Microsoft? Um, so I I don't I don't have um, I, so I, off the top of my head I don't I don't know of of the performance numbers that we have on 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 Vulkan um, and TVM is capable of targeting other graphics APIs. And so like, I know that there is a, a metal backend for um, if you're running on a Mac OS system, um, there you can also target um, Intel integrated graphics. Um, and I don't know, does, does anyone else from the TVM team know, like, you know, do we, do we support DirectML or DirectMX or DirectX? One of the, I mean, one of the nice features. So, so I'm checking on this right now to see to see if we support direct direct ML or direct X. Um, one of the nice things about TVM is that because because it's an extensible platform, um, it if that support doesn't exist, it's um, there's we 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 have prior art where 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 support has been extended to other platforms. Okay, so we have a question from Cody. Um, can you talk a bit about TVM support for model sparsity? Um, so I think I may let one of the one of the TVM team members, um, maybe uh, uh, Lily can can uh, offer some some feedback on that. Oh, and coming back to the previous question, um, we don't support DirectX or DirectML, but um, we do have support for, for Vulkan that works on Windows. Yeah, and and uh, and while we're checking on the model sparsity, uh, uh, sparse models. Um, some more feedback on Vulkan. Um, our internal benchmarks show that the Vulkan backend can outperform DirectML in a, in a few internal cases. So, so, so we're seeing performance improvements over DirectML. Um, so TVM does support sparse, um, does, does have support for for uh, for 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 sparse models, um, and I can um, Cody. We have a we we have a tutorial about that um, on the on the page here, and I'm going to add a link to it in the uh, um, into the answers here. And so we have our sparse models right here, as well as a medium blog post. Um, that talks about this. <clears throat> okay. Um, so a question from Yin Ma, before the core functions in TVM are C++ based, now we found some code like, some core code like VM runtime were only implemented in Python. Will TVM still maintain the C++ capability in the future? Uh, 
Um, so I, so uh, yeah, so I, I'm not a hundred percent certain which, um, which, which, which features are, um, are, 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 aren't implemented in the C++. I know that it's very important for TVM to be, be able to run a, on a number of different hardware platforms. And so being able to ge generate code that we can, can, that can be deployed to them is, is, is fairly important. Um, but we're having, um, yeah, so TVM core is always based on C++ and the VN runtime is C++ with Python interop support. Um, so, so Yin, this might be actually a really good question to, to uh, take to the discuss forums, um, so that we can uh, ha kind of have a, a a deeper understanding of the issue that you've been facing um, with the with, with the Python VM. Hey, Chris. Yeah, this is Zichen from uh, Amazon. I, pro I probably can help answer this question. Oh yeah, uh, that'd be great. It's so like for the VM runtime, I think the core part or like the, mo the most important or like the core features are actually implemented in C++. And the Python side is more like some user interfaces so that we can use to conveniently compile your model into bytecode, then we can like do inference through this kind of Python wrappers. But like they are, um, they are actually implemented the, the core part is actually implemented in C++. The Python side is just for user um, uh, like flexibility or like usability. So it's mostly, so C++ is mostly maintained and will be maintained for sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, so for the next question from, uh, uh, from Dr. Farshid uh, Priyansha, um, is TVM, does is TV, does TVM support Risk Five? Uh, yes, TVM does support Risk Five. Um, okay, from from Jay Karen. Um, I hope I'm pronouncing your names correctly on this. Um, thanks for the great intro. When are these operator level optimizations executing? Is it after converting into IR? Are these operator optimizations specific to a training framework? So I don't know if one of our panelists wants to wants to grab that question. Um, so, so, so TVM is is as I understand the way TVM works is that it's 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 it has representations for all of the operators, and so it it w w the intermediate representation um, describes the operator that it that 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 is that, that it's using, and that it and that it performs the optimiz optimizations on that um, at the at the level of at the so so TVM knows about the operators and it knows how to create a search space for those operators and it's and it's and it's and it's running that search over the operators um, but it, it's also possible for you to um, when when you're defining the operators in this when you're when you're expressing the operators in, in this intermediate language to actually do those optimizations manually and so TVM is built on layers where you can work on the operators, you can perform manual optimizations on those, but then the machine learning on top of that can search that space automatically. So I hope that that answered your question. <clears throat> okay, so what info do we need to provide to TVM to enable it to support a new hardware architecture? Oh, and coming back to the last question, um, the optimizations are agnostic to the frameworks. And so the op op optimizations are performed in TVM, Relay, or TIR. Okay, so so to answer this question, we actually have a tutorial later today, um, uh, which is the bring your own code code generation tutorial. Um, the uh, um, so there's a there's a longer tutorial about this, how you can target new hardware, um, and um, I I think it's going to be a really great presentation. <clears throat> Oh, 
Okay, so another question similarly uh, asked: uh, How how did you how do you do auto TVM on customized FPGA? Um, I noticed VTA can do auto TVM, but um, but very little was revealed on how to do that. Um, again, there, there's going to be a tutorial later on today um, at at uh, let's see at 11:30 uh, on how to bring your own code gen to TVM. Okay, um, another question. Can we specify different data types for the arguments in calling an extern operator TIR call pack such as input int eight or um, such as the input is int eight or output is int 32? Um, So I believe the answer to this question is yes. Uh, T TVM is 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 fairly um, flexible on how you specify the operators. Um, in the you know, but it largely depends on how the model the, the model has been written. Okay, so Richard Liu asks a question, can TVM help with the data pipeline for the AI ML process? Um, as it stands right now, TVM is, is, is uh, um, it, it's, what, what TVM is producing is, is typically compiled models that, that you're able to run in an, within a number of different environments. Um, so for the AI ML process pipeline, um, th there's, um, it's, it's, it's more, that's more of the responsibility of, of the application, I would say. And so it really depends upon the application that you are, that, that you are running to manage that data. Now within, now when TVM is actually trying to optimize a, a model for new hardware, there, there is a, um, uh, there, there, there is an, a, a, a remote server that you can use to manage the hardware that you're training against. And so let's say that you're training against a bunch of, um, of Raspberry Pis. You want to train your model to optimize it against a bunch of Raspberry Pis. It has a remote pr procedure call server that will connect to those Raspberry Pis, um, run portions of the optimized model there to, to collect data, to feed back into the optimization process. And so, you know, in that way, TVM, when it's when it's optimizing its own models, um, does have a uh, does have a framework for being able to manage multiple instances that you're training against. Um, so within the uh, um, so if you're on Zulip Chat. Um, Oh, wait a second. Um, we, we, oh, <laughs> hold on. Uh, okay, so are there any updates to TVM on JavaScript and WebGL, WebAssembly and WebGPU? Um, I know that there has been, I've, I've heard about interest in WebGPU. <laughs> Um, I think Kenshi has a web GPU demo somewhere uh, and we have a blog post about it. Um, for further information, we can definitely ask Kenshi about, um, yeah. Okay, so following back up on the, on the, uh, um, on the input type, so it so it so it so it seems that only one D type can be specified in a in a call, and that may be um, that sounds like it's a limitation of the um, um, uh, of the system, and it might this might this might be be a good question to bring up um, either on the Zulip chat um, where we can give it a little bit more attention live, or within the dis, within the Apache TVM discuss forums.
Okay, so we have a question. Um, can we see better performance gains than inference accelerator SDKs on OpenVINO, Tensor RT, and in, if so, how is this being different? Uh, hi, Chris. Can I ask yes. this question? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, great. Uh, thank you, Chris. Uh, so I think we, uh, first of all, we support um, um, better um, both of the world optimization. Like we can uh, put a part of our computational graph to test RT and another part to optimize ourselves, which means we're definitely at least not worse than test RT itself. And second, we have the flexibility to do optimization, like we can do tensorize, auto tensorization, um, which do not need human labor, which means we can mm, run potentially better for mm, for different for like customized workloads than TensorRT. And we do have some papers like the unit published by UCLA, um, Jian Wong from UCLA, that says we can run much better on certain workloads than those uh, handcrafted libraries. Uh, so does it answer the question? Okay. Um, okay, so another question um, from uh, an anonymous attendee. Uh, Onyx Runtime has an option of scheduling inference on multiple hardware. How is TVM's auto scheduling different from that? Um, so I I th I think that um, it it might these might this might be an apple to oranges comparison. Um, uh, um, where. Um, TVM's auto scheduling is it, it is focused on optimizing for a um, yeah I don't know is, is there is there someone from the from the TVM team that might be able to take this question uh, I can probably help answer this first question this is Cody from Amazon oh yeah please do oh uh, sure. Um, so auto scheduling is focusing on optimizing the general subgraphs in the model instead of just a single operator one by one as the auto TVN. And auto TVN requires the Toby template, uh, predefined the Toby template um, with the uh, predefined schedule parameters like the tile sizes or something like that. So it's basically just a parameter tuning, but auto scheduler, auto scheduler is more flexible. So we don't need Toby, Toby template anymore, but we can just give a random um, T compute, and we can schedule that um, for any devices. So it's actually a more general, more flexible, and more long-term solutions compared to the auto TV and we're currently using. Okay. Um, so <laughs> the questions, the questions, uh, um, uh, keep coming in. Um, um so so there's a question how do you map to tensor rt layers and create an engine mm. so basically um it is like all the byoc workflow in tensor uh, in qvm that we create uh, we find a subgraph that may, that can be mapped to tensor rt and then lower that uh, using like C code generation. And then uh, in the run, uh, we link TensorRT with our TVM runtime and run the part of um, the part of the TensorRT um, tensor layer to, to TensorRT engine. So um, TVM does provide a very nice um, front end and um, graph partitioning and runtime for TensorRT. Yeah, yeah uh, the short answer is that uh, Cody is gonna do you want to say a demo for that today? So you will have, uh, you will see that how we can do that basically. Okay. Um, so we are, um, 
so right now we are at um we're about we're at 10 10 we're about five minutes before the next talk and so we'll try to get a few more questions in but we might have to cut some of the questions short um so that we can prepare for the next talk um okay so so here is a um here's kind of a uh Here's kind of a, a a deeper question. Um, there was there was mention of use of of RL for search in optimization space. What is the level of optimization you have you have applied it? Is it just for nested loops, matrix tensor operations, or are there any other levels, say graph level optimization shirts that have been used or applied? So this is um, so so. So TVM operates at, at a number of different levels. There is the operator level optimizations um, where where you can form a number of like, um, you know, we had a list of the operations that you can apply during, that, that TVM can apply um, to to an operator. So, you know, depending on how that works. Um, but then at a higher level, there are also graph level optimizations. Um, so, uh, um, so, so those features are available. How it compares with um, with FlexFlow? Um, I don't I don't know if I have direct comparison for that, um, but I think that there's a, a paper out there which kind of discusses the different compiler frameworks out there, and um, uh, um, you know, and, and and draws those comparisons. And so, um, you know, I think maybe if you reach out to us on on, on Zulip Chat, or um, I think that we can try to dig up that paper for you. Okay, so with that, we're going to close off the questions. Um, but I want to thank everybody for 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 attending. I want to thank you for your questions. Um, there's a, a lot a, a lot of great uh, detail there. I'm I'm sorry that we haven't been able to get to um, everyone's questions, but we're gonna, just going to take a quick three minute break, and then we're going to be back at ten fifteen um, with with another tutorial. Um, this time it's going to be. TVMC, a command line driver for TVM. So thanks, and I'm looking forward to seeing everyone there.